Two year old sales, you have the advantage of actually seeing them breeze an eighth of a mile, breeze a quarter of a mile. You have, you have the advantage of seeing them in training at close to top speed and see what their mechanics are like. But that doesn't take away the necessity for what we do here, which is similar to what we do at yearling sales. Taking a horse out of the stall and, and making a, an assessment, taking a snapshot, if you will, of the athlete. Do we like the athlete or do we not like the athlete? And that's what Buzz does, Terry does, and what the rest of the team does to a, to a smaller degree. It's very much a, you know, it's an art form, it's a science, it's kind of a blending of the two. Surrounding you right now, there's probably about uh, 10 to 15 barns. They're all filled with consigners. Consigners are people that are either selling their own horses, that they bought at yearling sales or weanling sales, or, and that's the case with David McCaffin, our man who takes care of all of our, our horses over there. And this horse he's gonna show us is one that he bought with his own money, paid 112,000 for him at the, at the yearling sale. So that's one thing that these consigners are doing. The other is that they're selling for clients. Client says, listen, I bought this yearling or I raised this yearling, I bred this yearling, I want you to market and sell this horse for me, which is why we call the consigners consigners rather than owners or sellers. Sometimes they're doing it for somebody else. The great part is that the people that are doing this are the best of the best of the best at what they do. So we're comfortable with buying from any number of these people. This is a cult by Yes, It's True. He's in your catalog, he's hip number 95. Um, not to tip our hand at all, but this is a horse we've been looking at. We like him, you know. We're, we're seeing whether or not we're, we're going to be involved. Confirmation-wise, uh, he's the closest thing that I have in my consignment of what you really need. Uh, and let's talk briefly about that. We'll get Buzz to talk about it, but let's talk briefly about what, what parts of the horse you're looking at from a confirmation standpoint when you buy the horse. As, as we uh, discussed earlier, uh, when, when we're looking for athleticism, and, and, and through, through years of looking at these things, we, we have some preferences as to what we want. Uh, this horse has a, a very nice short bag, uh, which is a, uh, something that we really, we really like. This horse has a dynamic hip, the length of hip. Uh, that's what we look for. There's a lot of power in this hip. There's a lot of power in, in the muscles here. He has a, a great gasket, beautiful forearm. This, this is this is a lot of a lot of strength and power. It doesn't seem like but that's it's almost like in a in, in, in any athlete. Like if you look at a running back, you know, those guys. And and uh, so we look for that and we like that. This horse has a, a beautiful uh, hind leg, the angle of the hock. Uh, we love the neck set, the way his neck ties in here, rather than, they can, they can just, this is a very athletic neck set on the horse. He's got a beautiful top line, what we call, that's, that's his presence across the top. He, he, his, with, his withers are, this is just a real nice horse, right? <laughs> so that's why we're showing him, because we love him. Uh, and when we say top line, He's not a high-headed horse. He's not a horse with, with bad withers. He's got that beautiful level line to him. Those horses usually move really well. What are the places where you look to say, hey, this is a really strong-boned horse? You look at the cannon bone particularly, or where else do you look? I think, like, when they talk about bone, they like to see a lot of bone beneath the knee. A, a nice, uh, some of those horses are just so petite, you know, that, that it's a questionable how sound those horses can stand when they're very fine bone. Uh, most horse buyers look for an, uh, a lot of bone beneath the knee. And when they say this horse has got good bone, they're talking about the bone down from the knee down, you know, and, and that's what they're talking about. When they started buying horses, put them in my barn, you start realizing that, especially when you start breezing them, that wow, these, these are athletes, these are better horses than I'm used to being around. Right. Uh, and, 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 and then you start looking, well, what are these guys seeing? You know, and so through the years, uh, the things we're talking about are the things that I learned from from guys like Buzz. But they put a horse in the barn and you're like, why is he so special? I mean, he's just another horse. Well, they're not. They're athletes. And, and, and again, every 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 individual doesn't doesn't have to have 
be a talented horse, but your odds go way up when you deal with these kind of individuals. How long does it take for you to decide whether you like a horse or don't like a horse? Well, I mean, sometimes they fool you, but most of the time, when they come out of the stall and they act like this, I mean, there's all these people around him. He's only a baby, he's a two-year-old, he hasn't been to the races yet, and he's a cool customer. And he's nice and relaxed, he loves what he's doing. He's a very well-balanced horse, and he's got beautiful feet, too, which go a long way. I mean, that's where it starts. You're saying no foot, no horse, when he's got a nice foot. Talk to me about that, about what you look for in a good foot versus a not-so-good foot. Good square foot, a good solid foot that, with a nice spread heel that doesn't sit too low to the ground, and he shot beautifully, whoever did the, shot, the shoeing job on him. And he, he's just a well-balanced, nice horse. He has a nice angle to his past, and you look for 45 degrees around the horse. This is a, um, a filly uh, by Smoke Lacken, uh, a filly that is hip number 157. One of the fun things about getting to know people like Wayne Lucas in the game is that you get their sort of, uh, their kind of um, old sayings, and as she walks past, um, this is a filly that kind of fits Wayne Lucas's description of his ideal filly. Face like an angel, ass like a washerwoman. <laughs> That's, which is a way of describing a big, powerful hind end that doesn't have any excuses about moving, but a beautiful, uh, pretty, intelligent face and beautiful head. She's got a short, short back. She's got an extremely powerful shoulder. And you're also looking for a 45 degree angle here, just as you are for the pasterns down there. Her cannon bones are on the shorter side. That's, um, you know, Buzz and, and David and Terry haven't talked about that. Everybody's got their own likes and dislikes. I love to see a shorter cannon bone. Typically just means that I'm gonna have fewer phone calls to partners saying, well, we've got a chip here or a chip there. They stay, they stay sounder um, with some, some, in my estimation, with a shorter cannon bone. Good angle to the pasterns. She's got a, a wonderful heart girth, meaning from here down to here where, the, where they're gonna get their air and where they're gonna get a lot of power and strength from. And she does have, <laughs> she does have the, the, uh, the hind end that, that suggests a lot of power and a lot of strength and, and, and ability to be fast. How many years have you been around horses, Buzz? A long, long time. <laughs> Is it possible at this stage of the game for you to take a look at a horse and say, well, I think it's probably going to be a sprinter or it's going to be a long distance horse, or is that really a bit premature right now? No, well, I think by her pedigree and everything else, she's probably going to be a sprinter. And with the Coronado's quest on the bottom, she might get a mile. She might be a mile. But I don't think she's going to be a two turn for me. But of course, you never know. You don't have a crystal ball. But right now, we're looking at a racehorse to maybe break a maiden early, maybe win a stake race. 80, 70, you never gonna 80, 80, 80, 80, 70, now 80, now 70, 80, and 70, 80, you got time, 80, 80, 80, 70, you never gonna 80, now 80, now 90, 90, you never gonna 80, 90, 90, 90, 90, 120, 25, all three back there, man, 125, 120, 25, gonna do 120, get ready, 125, 120, 25, you ready, 120, 25, 120, and Tommy, 120,000.